guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, aka VHS82 Apostor B, with episode number 21 of my Italy's Holocaust. Looking at the films from specifically this one, dating 1979 and ultimately bookended uh, by Michele Sauve, uh, Sauve uh, with his uh, Della Morte, Della Morte, Della Morte, Della Morte. Uh, always been mixed some up cemetery man 1994 um and everything in between right um and so we've been looking at uh i've been looking at and you've been listening um to the uh zombie franchise as we accept it generally speaking right and i should have pulled them off i didn't even think to pull them all off just now but we've gone through them and uh we arrived at the seminal zombie film in all of history i think um, this is my go-to. This one edges out Dawn of the Dead just a smidgen, man. I love Dawn of the Dead. I actually love it. I can, you know, Dawn is a little bit more like comfort food for me, but I, I'm really in the mood, man, for a zombie movie. Uh, jungle, not really so much jungle horror, although I guess it is in a way. Um, island horror, voodoo, uh, zombies, the old school way. Uh, it is Lucio Fulci's 1979 seminal film, Zombie 2, or Zombie, or Zombie Flesh Eaters, or how about Nightmare Island, the title that was on uh, Sacchetti's uh, original script, which uh, uh, Briganti, uh, his wife Eli Elisa, has credited uh, for that, and uh, <coughs> that's just the beginning, that's just the beginning of why Lucio Fulci went on the tear that he did. It was who he was surrounded by, mostly. We'll get into that in a second, I think. Uh, but, man, Rue Morgue's beautiful, beautiful cover piece. If you've, uh, I don't know if this is still uh, able to get uh, bought or not, but it doesn't hurt to go on Rue Morgue's site and, chat and see if you can still get this bad boy, man. This is, it wasn't quite as full of uh, zombie stuff as I had hoped, uh, but what is in here is pretty dang good, man. It's pretty dang good. Um, and so what am I uh, showcasing here? First of all, the blue underground. It's not the 4K, but man, does this Blu-ray look awesome on my 65-inch uh, uh, 4K run-through, of course, a 4K player. Um, this is uh, the bridge cover. This is the one I opted out for. There were three, right? Worm, uh, worm zombie, worm face zombie, uh, splinter in the eye, and um, yeah, and the bridge. And this is my favorite. This is the seminal moment at the end of the film, um, of course. And uh, and so, I just show it. If you don't have it, just by weird chance, I'm gonna show you how beautiful this thing is. First of all, this thing is so beautiful, man. Check it out, man. Look how beautiful that is. And you got Frizzy score in there. Uh, and a great book. And uh, that's a little thing behind it, but in a great book. Um, I saw this movie on the big screen a couple years ago. In fact, uh, I stuck it. Is the old, this is the first copy I ever got. Uh, the old Blue Underground. The, the first Blue Underground, I think. But uh, there's my ticket. Saw this on the big screen a few years ago. Uh, is the year on there? 17, August 24th, uh, 2017, apparently. Um, at a, It was uh, part of Thursday Night Terrors um, at the theater that I went to. Um, standard standard DVD. Um, I did not very much stuff on here. Radio Spots, TV Spots, stuff like that. Uh, and then uh, I upgraded to the Arrow, uh, which is uh, really cool. Because it, uh, it sports... Um, uh, I just want to mention it. Um, where is it? But, well, audio commentary by Fulci biogra uh, biographer Stephen Thrower, which is really st stinking cool. But from Rome, Romero to Rome, the rise and fall of the Italian zombie film documentary is on this one uh, from Arrow. Um, yeah, and that's the thing, man. Uh, between Arrow and Blue Underground, man, I mean, they are so fully loaded. Uh, the thing that's cool about this one is Guillermo del Toro's out here giving a 10 minute spiel about why he loves the film. He also gives a brief introduction to the film, uh, which is really cool, but fully loaded, so many extras. Uh, Steven Thrower has got a great uh, piece on here as well, documentary, but um, 
Oh no, wait. Uh, I meant um, crap. Yeah, Stephen Thrower and um, crap. Uh, Troy Howarth. I'm sorry, my brain. I'm just. I don't know. I'm just not thinking right. Uh, Troy Howarth, who authored Splintered Visions. Uh, he's also, uh, I think he's got the commentary on the Blue Underground. Um, well, I mean, I could be looking at it here, right? Um, da, 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 da. I think he is on here. Um, yeah, Troy Howard has got the commentary track on here. Anyways. Um, first released by, on VHS by Mag, um, Magnum in 1980. Of course, this is a variety distribution, variety film. And uh, so just talk about the film for a minute. Golly. Um, I grew up with this uh, this movie in a sense. I mean, I mostly grew up with Dawn and the Dead. And then my taste, I don't know, started as the more I fell in love with Italian cinema and the more I fell in love with Fulci's Gates of Hell, the more I took a look at zombie, the more I started to look, I mean, really watch zombie. And that began the struggle of, man, which one, which one do I really love more? And then I, at some point I arrived at this point. There was just, I don't know if there was the voodoo element, the, the, just the, lo, the locale, <clears throat> the, um, the aesthetics, uh, the zombies themselves, uh, Giannato de Rossi's work. And that's a thing, man. I mean, think, consider this, man. You got Briganti, of course, crits, credited with the screenplay, but Sicchetti, you know, wrote uh, wrote the original. Um, uh, Fa Fabrizio De Angelis, of course, would go on to also uh, produce for um, Fulci and the Beyond and House by the Cemetery. Of course, he missed his uh, missed the city. Um, he was, I think, too busy uh, zombie Holocaust. <laughs> Uh, to kind of ride the coattails of zombie. Uh, Frizzy, of course. Um, first time I think he ever worked with uh, Fulci uh, providing a score was the uh, War of the Apocalypse. Uh, Savalti, a cinematographer, of course, he runs through the whole Gates of Hell trilogy and uh, many more, I think starting with War of the Apocalypse as well. Um, Tomas, the editor, uh, I think he began his run with Fulci back in 71 with the Lizard, uh, Woman in Lizard Skin. But he also edited the Gates of Hell trilogy. Uh, Gino De Rossi, special effects, Giannato De Rossi. Um, I, I mean, it, it, for, for Fulci, man, it was, it was about surrounding himself, being surrounded by the perfect team. And a team that he would have for at least, uh, I mean, you know, 79, 80, 81, 82, 80. We'll just say a five-year run. A, a five-year run. And you think about the movies that he created in that five-year run. Uh, just the Gates of Hell trilogy alone. Um, but then you throw some, you know, all the other films that he did. The Black Cat and Contraband. And, uh, uh, of course, beginning with Zombie and uh, New York River and... Uh, um, you know, just uh, the tear, the, the uh, Manhattan Baby, the tear that he went on was, I think, kind of unparalleled. Um, Zombie is really mostly remembered and known for, of course, the splinter. Uh, oh, oh, cause, uh, oh, guys, um, what's her name? Um, oh, God, what the heck is her name? Um, Olga, Olga, I can't remember her last name. Um, Dr. Bernard's wife. I don't know why I don't have it written on my stupid sheet. I got everyone else written on my stupid sheet. Um, Stefa Stefania Del Moro, I think that's how you say it. The nurse, Bernard's nurse. Man, oh, I don't know why, man. I just, I kind of get lost up in that. I don't know why. It's just a weird thing. Al Cliver, you know, brings in and, uh, uh, of course, you know, the work of, uh, Ramon Bravo, um, uh, with the shark, the underwater photography and working with the shark, that whole sequence. Um, I don't know, man. This movie brings so much, you know, the splinter and the, and, and, and the eye and then the aftermath of Menard's wife and just how they find her. Um, and just the fact that these zombies come up out of the ground. I mean, it, it, it was really, I know it, it rode the coattails of uh, Dawn's success and uh, you know and I know I understand Dario was not impressed at all uh, when they chose to run marketed as zombie 2 since Dawn was marketed as zombie in Italy and throughout Europe 
and I know uh, he was, and it probably was sort of the beginning when uh, Dario probably was not very impressed with Lucio, and I'm so glad those two reconciled in the end. And it's too bad the the wax mask never got made. It, that could have been a great a great thing, I think. Um, one last huge hurrah, a real hurrah. Um, you know, the story of the marketing, um, uh, it's run, uh, the zombies run in the drive-in circuit here in this, in this country. Um, you know, the, the critics were sort of kind of mixed. I mean, some actually gravitated to it. A lot of them just called it a, a, a copy of Romero's work but with no substance and I think all of these years later I think Zombie is probably looked at a lot different than it was ever looked at initially uh, it's its own film and the worst thing about the worst thing about it is it wasn't capitalized on immediately how or why I mean I, I just don't understand the thought process how and I don't know what he was up to, what he was doing, <coughs> how DeAngelis didn't just immediately grab hold of Fulci and just say, dude, we gotta, we gotta follow this up now. Instead, we wait to 88 in a movie that is, it is what it is. Um, but we never, instead, what we did get though, and I'm glad DeAngelis and him reunited for uh, both House and for uh, The Beyond, we did get the Gates of Hell trilogy. And had they capitalize on the success of zombie initially by running another film or two we might have never got the gates of hell trilogy i think maybe the gates of hell trilogy was fulci's response maybe or at least the next you know continued evolution of where he seemed to be launching himself um and those three movies man and i think city is just a hair breadth above the beyond but the beyond i mean I'm not gonna argue with anyone who thinks that's his masterpiece. Um, don't torture a duckling. I mean, you, when you think about the Giallo's expression, um, four of the apocalypse and just Fulci's life, man, going back into the comedy days. Uh, it's just the man had a unique run and it's so horrible that he had as much tragedy, tragedy befall him as he did. Um, and it might have um, contributed to much of his angst that he showed from time to time uh, on set as a director. Um, I mean, face it, if he decided he didn't like you, uh, it was not going to be a good time for you. But if he loved you like uh, Giovanni Lombardo Ritici, uh or even Ian McCulloch, um, had a good relationship with him, uh, things were good, man. Things were good. And how is it that we just lost uh, Giovanni? We just lost him a, a couple weeks ago. Not even. Um, the fat, the, the fat boat zombie, man. I mean, how ferocious is that scene, man? <laughs> when the two just, man, the two just bleh, right through the door, man. And of course, you know, that probably is the catalyst for the plague that will befall New York is the, is the fat boat zombie. Um, I would imagine James Edward Sampson's in this, you know, in this thing with uh, as a corner number two. Uh, Ataviano Delacroix, man, is our uh, worm-eyed zombie man. That whole sequence, man, of that. Dude, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Dude, if you were standing there like her, you'd be frozen in all of the majesty of fright. I mean, you, you just know what you'd be. There's no, you, you be, you would be probably as hypnotized as her in looking at this behemoth just coming up and to her, uh, to her end. Oh, uh, Richard Johnson, man, as Dr. Bernard is just, bah, lights freaking out, man. Richard Johnson, is, R Richard Johnson is freaking awesome, man. I love his whole freaking character. Ian McCullough brings it, man. Tisa Farrow, I mean, I've heard a lot of criticism, criticism about her and, uh, kind of flat, you know, in here, but I don't know. I, th I, I don't really have any issues at all. Um, Lucio Fulci, man, is uh, Peter's uh, news editor at the beginning there. How about that? Um, I don't know. I'm trying try to think real quick if there's a if there's a scene that um, I like more than any other. Um, I love just uh, Frizzy score, man, and when they when they're rising up, um, I love the bridge walk at the end. Uh, just the apocalyptic sense of what is going to befall New York, man. You don't have to see any of it. You get it. You know. You just were just on an island 
watching what took place. Now in your mind, imagine this is New York City. Can you imagine? Um, what a movie that would be um, if it was done. Well, yeah, right. Um, trying to think if I have a favorite, favorite. Um, I, I love just about every scene with Dr. Menard, uh, watching Richard Johnson. Uh, the shark scene, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe... Maybe my favorite scene is the shark scene. That is just, the work that went into that is just, uh, well, it's unparalleled in film, isn't it? Um, I don't know. I could talk, I could talk and talk and talk and talk. Um, I know this is, uh, this is a 4K restoration and it looks absolutely out of this world beautiful. Um, but I, I, I am, I would, I will probably, if I get a chance, if I'm able to, I will probably get the 4K as long as it's still out by Blue Underground because um, I've heard, I've heard that it's uh, that it's just a pretty noticeable step even from the Blu-ray, and that is, I I, I just this movie's so beautiful on, on the 4K restoration. I can't imagine what it looks like in 4K. Um, of course, the original artwork inside there. Um, it's good stuff, the second disc. Uh, the score, of course. I don't know what else, man. I, I just, I think this is one of those movies that has grown on me over time, and uh, I appreciate it. I, I absolutely, I just, I think Dawn, for me, is comfort food more than anything, although I love it. Um, Zombie is just, I was watching it the other night, last night. I mean, it just, boy, it never gets old. Never gets, never gets old. Um, yeah, anyways, probably wrap it up here. Um, I love this movie, man. I absolutely... I, I, man, to, I, to me, there's nothing like it, man. I mean, and I'm so happy that Fulci uh, would go on to express himself a little bit more uh, with the Gates of Hell trilogy, which I consider the greatest uh, loosely connected horror trilogy ever. Um, easy, hands down. I don't care. Uh, it is the greatest. Um... Yeah, zombie. Um, so here we go. Uh, ranking real quick. I don't know. Um, zombie. Zombie four. Zombie five. Killing birds. Zombie three. How about that? I think that's what we'll go. But I love them all. I love the franchise as it is. How we view it and look at it and consider it. Um, love it, man. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Episode twenty one zombie i think as a natural precursor uh probably or precursor i'm not even sure why i said that word um probably just move forward and do um zombie holocaust since uh deangelis jumped off a of zombie and uh and did that as a producer i think we can go ahead and just maybe knock that knock that one out and then we'll see i just recently added burial ground to my collection um mostly for um body bags because we're doing a special uh, around the world type thing and I've got Italy and so it'll be burial grass in a couple months anyways let's uh, so zombie man how did you get to know this film drop it down tell me a story I, w I will read it and I will respond I will reply I think I've proved that uh, to this point I always do my best to respond and respond quickly let the frizzy score just go and go and go Bolchi lives, man. Bolchi lives. As always, we end these things off with Go Bill.